Welcome to Engage with the Word Week 2. In the theme, gratitude. So this is the time where we search other parts of the scripture to read, learn, and apply the message that God has for us and to see our story in his story. So welcome to Engage with the Word. This week we are taking an adventure to Acts 9. Um, it's right before Romans, Acts 9, 1 to 22. And this is actually um, one of my favorite stories and my favorite people in the Bible. I kind of gave a, a little bit of a giveaway yesterday when I talked about it, but I'm really excited to read this story today. And as we read this section together, listen to this life-changing experience and take notes on the insights you learn from it. So let's read Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 22. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to a high priest. He requested letters uh, addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for the cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there, on the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to, the, to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on the mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. The voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him uh, in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to, to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But the Lord, but Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers of Jerusalem, and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest anyone, sorry, everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, go. For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit instantly. Something like scales fell, fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. I actually missed that point. After, afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days, and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is indeed the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Isn't this the man who caused such devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked? And didn't he come here to arrest them and take them in chains to the leading priest? Saul's preaching became more and more powerful, and the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. <laughs> this is... This is quite the intense story. So Saul, later his name changes to Paul. And this is that apostle. 
who was a leading persecutor of the early Christians and eventually had this life-changing experience where he, uh, God puts light down on him, blinds him, and eventually he sends someone here to um, allow him uh, where Christ used this person to, you know, uh, like they say, um, remove the scales from Saul's eyes so he could see again. And then what happens? Immediately we see Saul going out, becoming an apostle for Christ immediately, which is just, it's just mind boggling to me. So Paul, Saul, has done more to shape Christianity than any other individual except Christ. He was born a Jew, raised in a Jewish home, and was educated as a Pharisee. Then as a young man became violent against Christians, but has a life-altering experience with Jesus and is converted. Paul then dedicated the rest of his life to proclaiming Jesus as Savior. I wanted to point something out here. If you look at um, chapter 9, Acts 9, verse 5, if you look at it, he says, Who are you, Lord? And initially, we want to think that he, he he's saying that it's Lord, the God in heaven, okay? But if you actually look at the details here in the text, it is a lowercase l. And um, if you look at Ananias's re response, when the Lord spoke to him in verse 10, it says, the Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias, yes, Lord, that Lord is capitalized. So I don't have it pulled up with me right now on from my Logos study, but we see that Saul actually is not looking at him as God, as Lord. We're seeing that he's, it, it's a general term, it, as I'm assuming, I have not looked that up specifically, but that is not the Lord of heaven uh, versus um, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replies. So um, that was something that I wanted to point out to you because right here, Saul does not know the Lord at this point yet. He, he's, he grew up to be a Jewish, um, he grew up in a Jewish home and he grew up as a Jew and he knew of God, but I am, I am pretty sure that this is his first experience with God. And what amazing and life-changing experience this is. It's just mind-boggling. So those are just my opinions. Those are not fact. Um, I have not done the research behind it because I just, when I just read it, it just popped up in my mind as an insight. So I will write, write that down and, and be sure to check that out later. Um, but it's definitely something that you uh, think about, like, Huh, I wonder why he did not address him that way. So, yeah, um, just a thought. What an amazing person and a great example of how to follow Christ through persecution. So, through our trials, through, you know, we, we see Paul in his journey being persecuted. And it's ironic because he was the one that did the persecuting to begin with. And so... When Christ says, you know, go for Saul is my chosen instrument in verse 15 to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. I find that interesting. I find that very interesting. In your journal and notebook, think about what Jesus has done in your life. Write out the changes that he has made in you and how you are using and, and how you're using it today to make a difference in others. So have you gone through some trialing experiences where, where you have 
fully experienced God in some way, and it has changed who you are. And if you're experiencing that right now, embrace that. That is just absolutely beautiful. It might be very uncomfortable, and you might not see the beauty just yet, but I guarantee you, through, through the refinement, you will be beautiful. And if you've already gone through your refinement and he has restored your soul and you are doing what the calling that he has asked you to do, continue to move forward in that. It is going to change lives and that is what we're called to do. So let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day for these women here that have come to study your word. Lord, thank you for these life-changing experiences that are given throughout the Bible and specifically to Saul, who then we know as Paul. Lord, he has made such a great impact on Christianity and without him, we would not have these great examples. And Lord, I thank you for putting them into our lives. Thank you for your power. Please, Lord, use us as your vessels, to reach others so that they can grow in a relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for your undying love. Thank you for your support, and thank you for your guidance. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings.